Hello, and thanks for joining us on our tech series, how-to videos. Today, we have a customer bike in the Land headquarters. This bike's here because we're gonna change the gearing on it. So whether you're changing from a 19 tooth to a 15 tooth or a 15 tooth to a 19 tooth, this will cover everything you need to know, as well as if you need to change your primary drive belt, your jack shaft, or adjust your rear chain. So stay tuned, we're gonna go through all the steps you need to know. So before we get started, there's a few key items that you're gonna to need to complete the job. Now the tools that I used on today's job are not gonna be the ones that you might use, but this is gonna be the most optimal tool setup for this job. What we have here, three Allen wrenches, a six millimeter, four millimeter, and a three millimeter, a three eighths ratcheting wrench with a five millimeter socket, a pair of pliers, a good measuring tape, a 13 millimeter open end wrench, a 20 millimeter open end wrench, a torque wrench, a drift punch, some blue Loctite, anti sees, and a good hammer. One thing you'll need to ensure the proper torque specs during reassembly is our proprietary axle nut socket. We offer this on our website, so you can go ahead there or click the link below to find this socket. And the parts you'll need for the job are found on our website under the gearing kit. It comes with a sprocket and a chain cut to length. First, you're gonna to wanna to start by getting that rear tire off the ground. And the way we do this here in the Land Factory is if you have that front tire locked down to the ground and you push up on the battery box right here, that front tire, that rear tire is gonna come right up. Then what we're gonna to wanna to do is locate the master link and get it to the position right here so we can take the chain off. Now grab your pliers and pop the master link clip off. And if you're reusing the chain, set aside all the master link components for reassembly later. And now would be a good time to clean that chain while it's off of the bike, that way you're not getting lube and everything all over the rest of your bike. Locate the two motor mount bolts on each side of the bike, and with your 3 8 ratcheting wrench, loosen those bolts. This is gonna allow us to pivot the motor backwards and relieve tension from the primary drive belt. Now go ahead and set the rear tire back down on the ground. This is gonna help us get into position to remove the primary drive belt. Now with both hands, we're gonna grab the motor and push it back, relieving the tension from the primary drive belt. Now we're gonna remove our peg ring trim bolts and we're gonna need both our five millimeter wrenches to do this. Only one of these needs to come off for us to remove the axle and we don't know which one that is until we start doing it. So it looks like it's gonna be the right side that came undone. And set that bolt aside. And with our drift punch and a hammer, we're gonna tap that axle right out the other side. And one thing to keep in mind as we're doing this is we only wanna come about halfway out because we don't want the jack shaft and spacer components to just fall and hit the ground. We wanna be able to get this out to a point where we can pull it out with our one hand and support the jack shaft carefully and let it lower out of the vehicle. Now, once we're at halfway, we're gonna pull that out with our one hand and support it here and let it come out the rest of the way. Now using our three millimeter Allen wrench, we're gonna remove the sprocket bolts. Now we're gonna remove our old sprocket. And before we put our new sprocket on, we just wanna make sure that this mating surface is clean of any debris. Before we reassemble the sprocket bolts, we're gonna to wanna to add a drop of blue Loctite to each bolt. Now, I know you're wondering, do these have a torque spec? And they do. It's six Newton meters. So if you have a quarter inch 
torque wrench, you're going to want to go ahead and use that now and torque these to six newton meters. Now we're ready to reinstall our jack shaft. And another good step before you reinstall your jack shaft axle, you're going to want to clean off any old residue and apply a thin coat of anti-seize. So now we're going to set up our axle to go into the jack shaft assembly. The easiest way to do this is to insert the axle into the pivot sleeve and then we want the small side of the spacer towards the inside of the bike and the large side towards the pivot. And we're just going to push it in so it rests just like that. And before you load the jack shaft into the bike, you're going to want to reinstall the primary drive belt. Now line up the jack shaft to the axle and we can start pushing that through. Before we come out the other side of the jack shaft on the sprocket area, we're going to want to reinstall our last spacer. Again, we're going to want that smaller diameter towards the inside of the bike and the larger diameter towards the pivot clamp of the bike. And once that's lined up, if we need, we can tap the jack shaft axle through the bike. And by the way, guys, this is a great time. If you ever need to change the belt on your jack shaft for any reason or reset the tension, this is a great procedure to use to do that. Now we're ready to install our last peg trim ring. Before we do that, another small drop of blue Loctite on the bolt. So go ahead and put this in, but we're not gonna tighten it down just yet because what we wanna do is check the side to side end play of the jack shaft before we go cranking this down because we don't want to put too much side load on our bearings. So once this is kind of snugged up, we're going to check the side to side play. And this doesn't have much. So all we're going to do once this is snug and our, our end play is set, we're going to hold the other side with our other five millimeter wrench and we're gonna turn this side another 25 degrees to set our jack shaft tension. Next, we're gonna to wanna to attach the belt to the motor so we can set our belt tension. Make sure it's lined up on this rear pulley. And we're gonna go ahead, even though this is a very tight space, we're gonna try and stick our fingers up here and walk it over the front belt. Now we're ready to pull that motor back to the front of the bike to set our belt tension. And all we're gonna do is rest our palm right here and grab that motor and pull it forward with some nice tension. Surprisingly, this belt does not have to have a lot of tension on it, but we do not want to be able to turn the belt more than 45 degrees. So if it easily goes beyond 45 degrees, what we're gonna wanna do is loosen that back up and just pull a little bit harder until we have a good tension on the belt. Now once that's set, the four motor mount bolts are torqued to 17 newton meters. We can go ahead and torque the rest of those bolts down now. And while you have your chain off, now would be a good time to clean the sprocket. Before you put that chain on, we're going to go ahead and get that rear tire back off the ground. So now we're ready to install the chain and we can start draping it over the rear sprocket first. And then we're going to feed it over the front sprocket. And before we connect our chain, we're gonna to wanna to loosen our rear axle nuts and our adjusters so we can set the tension for our chain. Grab our 20 millimeter open end wrench and we're gonna break this loose. Then grab our 13 millimeter open end wrench and loosen the locking nut for the axle adjuster. And with our four millimeter Allen wrench, 
we're gonna loosen the adjuster on both sides of each axle plate. And since we're doing a smaller 15 tooth gearing, we're gonna have a shorter chain. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is bring the axle position towards the front of the bike. And again, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing on this side so we can get that front axle moved forward. Now with those adjusters moved forward, we can go ahead and slide the front axle forward. And now that we've done that, we now have enough room so we can attach our chain with the master link. Now we're gonna to wanna to prep our master link with some chain grease that comes in the kit. So we'll go ahead and get this over the pins and then load an O-ring onto each side. And once that's all nice and lubed up, we can go ahead and slide it through our chain and make the connection. Add some more grease. Two more O-rings. Our plate. Now we're ready to put our master link clip on, but because of the rotation of the chain, we wanna make sure that this opening is towards the front of the bike. And it's important that we make sure that this is clipped and is fully seated against the pins of the chain. We do not want that coming off. So now that we have our master link connected, we're gonna set our chain tension. Our chain tension should be three quarters of an inch up and down deflection. So when we do this, it should only easily move up three quarters of an inch. Now to set our tension, we're gonna adjust these so we're pushing the axle back, creating tension on the chain. And as you're tightening it, just periodically check so we don't over tighten the chain. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And now that we've adjusted both sides of the axle adjusters, we have that chain right where we want it three quarters of an inch deflection. So now we're gonna to wanna to use our land axle nut socket and torque our rear axle nut to 51 Newton meters. And now we're ready to tighten our axle adjuster locking nut. Now there's a few different ways you can measure the rear axle position between both axle sliders. The way I like to do it is with a tape measure putting the one end on the pivot clamp and measuring right at the edge of the axle. And I like to measure to the right back side of this bolt right here, but any place on the axle that you do the same spot on both sides will work. And again, we're gonna tighten this axle adjuster locking nut on this side as well. Now that we've changed the hardware on the bike, we have to go into the Land app on our smartphone and update to the correct gearing. This will be under the settings tab and this will ensure that our display has the correct speed. We hope you found this tech series video useful. If you have any additional questions or need support, please email us at support at land .email. Thanks.